Welcome back to Live and Bike in L.A. I'm your host, Hanner and CV, with, uh, and it was a little loud for you. A little came pop in hot, it, baby. Came in came real hot. hot. It's okay. It's good, ener- good energy. You like that song? Yeah. What was that? Was that the refreshments? Um, what, who was that? That is my brother. My oh, brother really? wrote and recorded that for me. Does he need some lyrics on it? Uh, not right now. We okay. might, if we get some good, like, fan-inspired lyrics to put in, maybe we'll drop them in. Wow, you got there some you ideas? Go. Yeah, I could do it All right, right. Now. Oh, okay, yeah. We want to run it again. You R- throw some lyrics? Run it back. All right, can we do that? We'll run it again. What's, We're gonna the name? Have... what's, it, what's your name? Handron Seafi. <laughs> <laughs> what's the name of the show? To Live and Bike in L.A. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Go. We might. We might. I'm gonna have to cut that out, and that'll be the new one. We got new lyrics over it. Go. Or it could just be the limited edition uh, remix type Th- of thing. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll put it up on our Spotify separately. Uh, that's our guest for today, uh, Mr. Howard Kramer. Everybody, Woo. welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. This- it's great to be here. It is. It's great to have you here. Sound stage. I want to thank you for coming. I know it, yeah. when it comes out on video, it you, nobody knows the size of the room. So for all yeah. they know, we have a full audience in front of us and yeah. everything. Hey, every television show I saw growing up, I pictured in these massive, massive airplane hangers. And then when you come out, you walk into a room in a building, and you're like, "How does the Price is Right fit in here?" Oh yeah, yeah. I be, I've been to the only one I've been to is Craig Ferguson. Okay. And uh, that tells you when that was. He's not even on there. Did the you air. enjoy it? Did ya? Um, oh wait, is that the other Craig? No, that's that's our that's one, the Scottish yeah. one. Yeah, but it was so weird set up because like those bleacher seatings mm-hmm. are just so separate from. It feels yeah. like they're just gonna wheel your entire bleachers out of there and then yeah. bring in a new audience. Totally. And, it, and uh, have you been in the Jimmy Kimmel studio there? I have not. No. There's a real huge gap. Like there's a oh, real between big gap between people like, and yeah and uh, and room. the stage. Yeah, that room is big. Um. Yeah. All right, that's it for room talk. Uh, now let's Woo! get into bicycle talk. That's where we start. Uh, I I I made an emotional message last week about how I have a car now. Um, I wanted to be honest with people. I didn't want to get. Can I chime in on that? Yeah, you've been coming to do the show, Squat Mill Comedy Crawl Outdoor Show. Yes, you. I originally met you as the dude on the bike. I'm like, who's that dude on the bike? Mm-hmm. And for years, you've been showing up faithfully, like an animal, like. Clubber Lang, like just training hard, showing up on a bike to do shows. And uh, you told me about the car, and I was real happy for you. I knew that was a milestone. It is a big, it's a uh, oddly a comedy milestone because now I am, I am, you want me at West Side? I'm there. Mm. You want me in the Valley? I can be there. Where yeah. before when it was bike, it was like, I got to piece together. If I'm doing something on the West Side, I got to hit the train. So we're talking 45 minutes to get oh. over there. And then train back, and you're bringing your bike with you, and it's just and now the freedom. But I am still biking. I, uh, my wife and I share the car, so there's plenty of biking still happening. Oh, but it's it's much less frequent now and much less urgent. Biking is uh, has become more of um, a pastime and more of uh, something that's fun and like oh uh, you know I have an errand to do today. I'll take the bike out and do okay. it. Okay. So is the podcast going to reflect that? It's going to be a lighter, airier, more frivolous podcast. Now? No, we're going in deeper and darker. Is oh, what? Yeah, because I, like I lost the uh, you know the thrill of riding home from the comedy store at one in the morning and almost getting killed by people constantly on the street. I don't have that in my life anymore. Right, the heightened, <laughs> yeah. So I got to make it here. I got to do things here to uh, add to that thrill. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad you get your adrenaline rush. Yes. Through talking now instead of dr- instead of riding. just feeling a truck go by and just shake you as it blows by you. Yeah. Um. So your biking history. You grew up in uh, Jersey, right? Yeah, suburban's suburban New Jersey. Suburban New Jersey. Are we talking like uh, mall rats type Jersey, or even more suburban? Uh, it was pretty much that. I mean, that whole 
Kevin Smith stuff it happened about six miles away from where I grew up. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was very, uh, yeah, it's just that, yeah, there it is. That Central vibe. New Jersey, yeah, that's yeah. it, which they said didn't exist on the internet a couple months ago. Oh, really? So it was just n- Northern Jersey and Central South- New Jersey was trending, and it was like everybody that wasn't from there couldn't believe it existed. They'd never heard of it. It was wild. <laughs> what did they think it was? They just thought there's North Jersey and South Jersey. It's just n- n- never heard of New it. York suburbs and Philly suburbs, mm-hmm. and that's it. Yeah, and I was like, that's wild. Like, it's one of those things you you just assume that everybody knew, but they don't. So did you grow up uh, cruising the streets on, like, a little BMX there? No BMX, but I, it was more of, like, the uh, Schwinn 10-speed Moda Beacon. Oh, okay. Or, like, the, uh, what do you call it, with the little banana seat? Oh, like a beach cruiser or something? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Were, were was, you on the beach? Were, is that? Is uh, there... No, we were inland. Inland, was, like, okay. Matawan, but we, uh, we lived on a hill. Like yeah. we lived at the top of a steep hill, so bikes was like we'd ride them up and down the driveway, or we, it was super hard work. Yeah, it, was it easy? Like, oh, if I'm leaving the house, I can fly down the hill and get down there. But then yeah. you're uh, constantly thinking about coming back home. Yes, and you have to walk it up, like you would you would walk the bike back. But also, like uh, the first time I ever tried a skateboard, I got on it and went down that hill, not thinking about oh, I'm gonna have to stop. And just jumped off the skateboard and sprained my wrist. I had to go to the hospital. Oh, that's a just one sprain wrist isn't bad. I, those yeah. those can really fuck you up if you. But it, but it kept me from skateboarding. It kept me as a bike you, guy. That was one and done for skateboarding. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, except for I have a horrible comedy store skateboard story. Uh, okay. Is, is this, I'll make it quick. I'll no, no, quick. don't make it quick. Let's get into it. Yeah, because I, I, I skate to and from the comedy store all the time. Okay, so me, me, I'm living in Austin, Texas. Okay, but we did the show Austin Stories down there. Yep. So casting people got wind of us or whatever. So me and Chip Pope, my partner for that, we got cast in Man on the Moon. Oh no shit! Yeah, as these two obsessive fans, mm-hmm. and we're supposed to have these three scenes with Jim Carrey and Courtney Love and all this, and basically our our role or our arc was to be these fans that think everything he's doing is a joke. So we're huge fans, but when he gets sick at the end, like yeah. we come up and we think he's so great bit, Andy, great bit, yeah. great bit. So. We had to learn to skateboard because in the in the scenes we skateboard up to the comedy store like oh Andy what's up you mm-hmm. know so we didn't know how to skateboard so for six months we had to try to learn how to skateboard and we they give you a coach <laughs> or anything or you're just on your own on our own and we, are, are we talking like yeah. 70s style skateboards too you're yeah just, you got to be in, in the skinny ones yeah flimsy. and but basically we just had to kind of come roll up and stop mm-hmm. so we practiced that and then. Uh, now, are you coming from uh, La Cienega side or from, like, the Hollywood side up to the comedy store? It's more like, you know where that parking garage is, the, the slopes up to yep. the t- right you house? you got to come down that slope? Well, just, like, we got to come around by there. Oh, okay. It was, it, was, it was crazy. But anyway, so the day comes. We go into makeup. We, they put us in these 70s outfits. It's hilarious. Our agent comes by, taking pictures, all this stuff. And we were on set for about 12 hours. Uh, at one point, Gene Simmons showed up, and he's talking to Jim and this whole thing. And then, after at about you know, twelve hours in, the AD just goes, "That's a wrap." Yeah. And we go up to him. We go, "Hey, what about the thing?" And he goes, "You know, the director was Milos Forman." Yeah. He says Milos decided to shoot it a different way. Just <laughs> <That's> <laughs> nobody it. even told you. Nobody told us. So that's right. We just found out right there on the spot. Like you're out of the movie. <laughs> But um, we're still in the cast and, and still get residuals from Nice. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, but it would have been nice to- But to if do. you hadn't even said anything, you guys could have just, you would, nobody would have told you you're not, you would have just gone and gotten out of you yeah, know costume and yeah. walked home and yeah, nobody- we were, we were such a massive afterthought. Do you think you could have not even shown up and still just get paid? Maybe so. <laughs> been, that would have been an odd risk to yeah. take. Let's just not show up because I bet he won't shoot it. Yeah, I've been reading this script and the whole skateboard thing doesn't look like it's going to fit in. I bet yeah. they're not going to show us. Right. So you never even, were you uh, side of the set like practicing it on the board while you were waiting, thinking your yeah, stuff? Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of like trepidation of like, how, what if they ask us, like, how, how is he going to stage it? We just didn't know. Yeah. And he probably didn't know that we didn't know how to skate. You know? Yeah. So, uh, but that was it. They just, that was it. The whole thing just went away real quick. Dang. Yeah. And so you're living in Austin in that time. You'd flown out here to do that. Uh, we 
Or were you, had you we moved out here? We might have moved out here by then, I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. But then, to make matters worse, I went to a cast and crew screening of it, and there was something wrong with me at the time, and I fainted at the cast and crew <laughs> screening. <laughs> it was just not not my project, that whole thing. We don't, you don't have to say, but like something wrong with you. Did you figure out what it was? It was, I think it was just like malnutrition. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought you were just like, it was a weird time in my life. I fainted a lot, but I got over that. Uh, just low butt blood sugar. Um, another quick thing about that. Oh, by the way, don't roll over. You drop your sunglasses right there. I don't oh, want you to you. roll over those. Um, that, that frame, that shot, the comedy store, what used to be the Hyatt house, the ride house there. Is in, uh, I was watching the other day, Almost Famous. Yeah, Almost Famous, yeah. And they have the shot of them going into it, and you can see the comedy store yeah. right on the side. Hedberg's in there with uh, Nick, yeah. Nick Swartzen. Nick Swartzen, yeah. and uh, what's his name from, um, is the the Zeppelin guy? Um, Al Madrigal? No, the guy who's in like Freaks and Geeks and stuff. Uh, I forget oh, his oh, name. J- uh, Barishaw. Oh, J- oh, yeah. Jay uh, Barishaw. Yeah, uh, but... They show it, and you can see the comedy store there, and it's the patio and the sign and stuff like it is now, which I'm pretty sure that movie takes place in like 78 or something. It didn't have that front patio oh, and stuff oh, then, okay. but they just didn't. They changed the whole front of the Hyatt House to look like the Hyatt House did then because now it's like that and Andaz or something like that yeah, hotel. And Daz. Uh, but then they just didn't change the comedy store at all. They were like, ah, well, <laughs> fucking nobody will know. So they had names on there, like of guys from the 90s? I think it was. There was two names. He couldn't. I was watching on my computer. I wanted to pull up and see who who the names on the billboard were. But, yeah, uh, yeah definitely. I know they, well, they didn't have that whole front bar. I don't know if they had the patio or anything back then. But I know the, that front bar that's in the patio wasn't there. That, okay. that was put in much later. Yeah. All right, that's uh, the Hyatt House uh, part of our, <laughs> our show. Yeah. So you go up in Jersey, not wanting to get over that hill, and then you, uh, where'd you go from Jersey? You go to New York or you go to Austin? Yeah, I went to New York first. I went to um, like NYU for a year and acting school for a couple of years. Any biking around New York? I've Hell never no. biked in New York. No. Yeah. I mean, it's watching the, what was that, Kevin Bacon movie, oh, Quicksilver. Oh, Quicksilver, yeah. And then uh, just seeing what went on there with the, I mean, it was, in, that was suicide. That yeah. was crazy. It, <laughs> gotten better now new york city on a little flimsy 10 speed yeah so uh it's gotten better now because they have a lot of like uh protected bike lanes like up and down broadway and stuff like that but it's still like even i think they're even more than here head on a swivel when you're riding around hell yeah my uh my mom, for some reason, thought that I was a bike messenger in New York City. I was talking to her like a couple months ago. She goes, and you used to make money with the bike? I was like, Mom, I never, <laughs> never did that. She thinks she's got fantasies of, being up, of me being a lot more manly, I guess. I could see you doing that, though. You have that, like not like Quicksilver, but like the later one, the Joseph Gordon-Levitt bike okay, messenger Joe movie. Yeah. You, have, you have that little bit of vibe. I could see you uh, when you're you know in college being like, yeah, I just... I get a job. I bring packages up and downtown. That's all I do. Uh, uh-uh. I worked for an answering service. What's that? You just sit in a room, and uh, all these businesses that like can't afford their own staff, they just kind of the calls get forwarded to you. So to be like just random stuff, like a production company. Do you or, know what call is coming in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it doesn't. <laughs> you just pick up and have to guess who they're trying to get. A lot of fronts yeah. use that. I've seen documentaries where guys who like embezzle money and shit. Yeah. Like, uh, remember Lou Pearlman? He likes. Yeah. Lou, yeah. yeah. He. That's how they caught him because they, he was the uh, in sync guy, right? Yes. Yeah. And he had like answering services that were going to nowhere, and they like some investigators figured out that like that's how he was like duping his clients. Is he just he had fake business? Yeah. S- wow. Stuff with an answering service. And then, like, these detectives started looking into it, and they're like, oh, yeah, he's just, like, manipulating people who don't understand what, like, they think they're calling a business. Yeah, yeah. And it's just some dude in an office yeah. who just, it's like, like, um, it's like the, uh. Sounds like podcasting. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's a legitimate show, and then they show up and they go, it's just some dudes in a closet, yeah. that's all that is. Yeah, my studio. Um, but no, it's like the, uh, the equivalent of like the, the mailbox in the Bahamas that is, right, your, exactly. is your business. I think you have one of those too. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, you got the <laughs> yeah, of course. phone and a mailbox and you got yourself a f- 
five hundred one C three or something. Uh, back in the day when you would fill out a job application, put your friends. Number oh on yeah, yeah. For yeah. Or like a waitering job. Or yeah, something. yeah. I'd I'd put like my friends' references, just whoever has the best job, so that way I can put like I'll put like Chris Brooks, lawyer. And really, he's just a dude I grew up skiing with and stuff. But he is a lawyer. But it's like that's not why we have a relationship. Right, it's right. not. <laughs> it's just he happens. To yeah, be. he happened to be a lawyer. Every all of us, uh, him specifically. Shout out to Chris Brooks. Uh, he uh, is de facto a lawyer to like fifteen dirtbags like myself who just go, Chris. You're the only person we know. If we ever get in trouble, I don't know because nice. we can't like actually afford him. Yeah, he's like a good lawyer, but we're just like you owe us. You yeah. owe us. We were there. If I call at one in the morning, you're picking me up. I think we all have an imaginary guy. Like like my brother-in-law is a lawyer, so I just always assume if I ever get in trouble, yeah. I'll call John. And he's like, I do litigation. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had to call him? Uh, I did. Yeah, one time I got um, I got pulled over. I didn't have a license. I have my license have been suspended because of, and this is why I end up on a bicycle. I had three tickets in a row for um, inspection sticker being up, which they don't even have. The, they just have smog check here. But in Maine, they have, uh, you got to have an inspection sticker. And my car was just not going to pass inspection. Got three tickets in a row. Didn't pay for one of them. Paid for two. It lapsed. My license got suspended. And then I was driving with a girl I was seeing at the time and all of a sudden blue lights come on behind us and I just turned to her and I was like, I might be getting arrested right now. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> just like freaked out. <laughs> Did she freak out? She was like, what? No. Uh, okay. We'll figure this out. This is fine. So, How old were you? Uh, 24 okay. maybe. And uh, I, uh, too old. Like I could see you doing should, that. You should have known better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, uh, the cop, it was definitely, I was going like 10 miles an hour over and it was like five o'clock at night. I think the cop was just like one last easy ticket and we'll get out of here. And then he found out I didn't have a license or anything. He's like, ah, damn it. This is way too much. And he goes, I'm not going to arrest you now, but you do have to go to court for it. And then asked her if she could drive. And she's like, I can, but I just got my license back from getting an OUI and I don't physically have the license. Wow. So the cop was like, who are you people? <laughs> And then I had to go to court, and I got it all thrown out in court. Nice. Yeah. Because of your lawyer friend? Uh, no, but I asked him about oh, okay. it. He, he was the one who told me. He goes, because I hadn't done anything, like it wasn't OUIs, it wasn't uh, reckless, I hadn't endangered anybody. It was mm -hmm. just literally from inspection stickers. And he's like, just try and tell him that. You got it all cleared up. You don't have it. It wasn't for anything malicious. And it was New Year's Eve, and I asked the DA, and he was like, all right, yeah, let's let's cut it. Sweet. So, yeah, got away with the whole thing. White privilege, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, that's probably a big part of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Here's the weird thing about Maine. It's the whitest state, and then you walk into a courtroom there, and it does not look like the whitest really? state. Really? You're like, you wow. found them all, and they are in court here for some reason. I mean, that's hilarious, but also very dark. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, no pun intended. No, it was weird to walk into a courtroom in Maine and be like, whoa, like this is not the demographic that Maine is. Have you ever been arrested? Uh, I got detained once. My, uh, yeah, not arrested, but my, uh, I was driving with my cousin and he had weed on him. He mm -hmm. was driving, and he got pulled over. And he goes, "Hold this!" They never checked the passenger. <laughs> so I stuck it in my pocket, and we're looking over at the driver's window, waiting for the guy to come. <laughs> and I hear a knock behind me in my right ear, and then the guy just opens up my door. Yeah. And oh, didn't even ask. Just opened it. Opened the door. It's a Jersey State Trooper. And he goes, uh, what you got in your pocket? And I go, no, nah, no, nah, nothing. <laughs> oh, nothing? What's that? All right, let's go. So now my cousin's sitting up there, and they handcuff me and put me in the back of the squad car. And he goes, that's your cousin up there? And I go, yeah. He goes, you're a good cousin. <laughs> and I go, why? And he goes, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that for my cousin. You, you watched the whole thing happen. Yeah, and watched the whole thing. So then I'm just sitting in there, and then another cop brings my cousin in, uh, and then we go to a police station. Yeah. Call my lawyer. My actually the one that I was talking the about. Brother, my brother -in -law, yeah. <laughs> I'm he, calling my lawyer. My says, sister's boyfriend. Uh, you're just detained. It won't go on your record. And then my cousin just has to go to some kind of hearing or something like that. So I thought that was the end of it. Then I'm going up to. <clears throat> Sorry. 
going up to do Montreal Comedy Festival, mm-hmm. and they won't let me into Canada. They're going, what What happened to this? What's this arrest? What's this marijuana? What's all this? What's that? So it stayed on there like for internationally because I, I would always have to answer a lot of questions if I went to Vancouver. Yeah. Or, but you got in ultimately? Ultimately, yeah. Was that your uh, Fresh Faces? Was that your first time up there? Uh, yeah. Because that time. I've heard other stories of, uh, I know two people who've gotten, I think uh, Patrice got fresh faces or got Montre- something in Montreal and then couldn't, couldn't get, get in. in really? Because c- he had gone to jail. Wow. And then another friend of mine, Rich, uh, same thing, got it. And then he didn't even try. He got it and just said, thanks, but I, I can't. They're not going to let me in. He had OUI. Really? Yeah. You just wow. have to, which Canada too, like growing up in Maine next to, do you ever go to up to Quebec or anything? Not much. It is, those people are like backwoods people. Like they drink and drive plenty on those old roads and stuff. And there's weed everywhere. It's weird, like the things that they won't let people in. Why for. do you think they're so strict about that? Um, I don't know. It's a weird, like they don't want rabble rousers in there. I think, I think it's an easy way to keep out um, people that they don't want and people who like maybe will think they can go there for like a second life or something. Oh, uh, yeah. That part, I guess. I understand. Yeah. Then it makes it easier for they people. They leave to that not... for Western Canada, like they're known for the bud. Oh, for the the weed, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah up there in, uh, I've been to. I've only been in uh, Vancouver for a minute because I was going up to Whistler. I went mm. up to Whistler one summer to go skiing. Yeah, I've been up there. It's great. Was that pre or post when they had the Olympics up there? When did they have that? I think it was two thousand and eight. Two thousand, yeah, eight maybe. Probably around that time. Because apparently it's, I was there before and apparently it has changed quite a bit. They built like the road from Vancouver up to Whistler is now like a five lane highway and stuff. And oh, they, wow. Yeah, to be able to yeah, get people No, it must have been before that then. Let me see. Out cold. Wait, you were in out cold? No, but I, uh, I ran into a cast member when I was there. I go, what are you doing here? And they go, I'm filming this snowboard movie, Out Cold. So it's like, was oh, it Zach? Okay. Yeah. Is that by get cast member? You're burying the lead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the guy that was. The, the, he, w- gave, he gave me a weed cookie and it it just changed the tenure of my entire trip. <laughs> I was with family, so. But yeah, oh whenever, really? Whatever that was, maybe that was late '90s. I, don't know. I think that would have been maybe around 2000. 2001. Here it is. Boom! Nailed it. That was growing up being a freestyle skier. That was one of the movies that came out that even touched somewhat close to. There's like four movies that actually like go into skiing. There's that Aspen Extreme. You remember that one? Uh, I've you know I've heard of it. I couldn't say I saw it. Um, it's uh, that guy who's in it. Uh, Pete Burke. His uh, he was like he was a you know just some random new actor, and now he's like one of the biggest huge Wahlberg directors. Um. And uh, what is the other one? Ski School and Ski Patrol. That was Ski School, yeah, yeah. yeah. With uh, Shannon Tweed. Is that that guy's name? Or the... Oh, no, there was like Playboy Playmate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no, the guy in it, though, he's a kind of famous like 80s guy, but I don't know his name at all. Hmm. Doesn't matter. Can we look that up? Who's in, uh, who in Ski School? On it. Uh, Call down to the news department. Yeah. So you you uh, know biking in New York. Then you go to Austin? Yeah, then I went to Austin. Austin's, I biked around Austin. Yeah, there's some flatlands. You can bike around campus. It's great for that. Yeah, oh, especially around campus. Yeah. yeah. I actually did bike messenger stuff around there because everything's close by. It's easy to cruise around. Right on. So uh, Ski School came out in 1990, and uh, I've never heard of any of these people in the cast. Dean Cameron. That's him. Dean yeah, Cameron. Him. Tom Brenshaw. That's the one. Patrick. Whistle. Laboitro. Le yeah. It, but yeah, Dean Cameron was he was in a bunch of those eighties movies. Word. And then they just they did a uh a It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where the gang goes skiing and they pretty much just redid all of those eighties ski movies and he's in it. And it was a it was a good twist because he's like, I'm the party guy, but he's like fifty five and like mm-hmm. just you know, way too past and they're like, Oh, this is actually sad. We don't want to be the ski party guy anymore. Sounds like squat mode. <laughs> Well, which we we haven't said here uh, before. We've mentioned a couple of times what squat melt is. Oh yeah, um, this camera. Am I in this camera? This is you. Yeah, yeah. That's, you, that's you. Give your pitch for squat melt. Well, basically, when uh, there was meltdown comedy theater, it closed. 
and I was used to hanging out there, not always to see shows, but to hang out with the comics and stuff in the back. So when that closed, I thought, oh, this sucks that I can't come down here and hang out anymore. So I thought, well, why don't I just do a show out here, and then we can all just keep hanging out. Like, it'll still be fun, and people can do sets and stuff outside. So that's what I started to do. And so the very week, the week after it closed. It was literally the next week. So really, mount, week. Meltdown... The show Continuous. never missed. Yeah, never missed a Wednesday. Oh, so the squad yeah. is like squatters rights. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay. Like yeah. Meltdown. And Welcome and to the squat. show. Welcome to the well, show. Well, no, because <laughs> there's a there's a mic called leg day, and okay. so I was thinking oh, like squats, like you're doing right, your yeah. like Gym hard stuff. squat work. Yeah. No, we'll, I'm we'll get you pumped. We'll get you pumped. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we started doing the show, and then you started coming through. I would say probably maybe. What, when was the first show? Do you remember? April of 2018. April. So I first came in July. Okay. So, so you're the, you were early good on. Good three, four months before but I got there. There's not that many people, OGs, before you. Yeah. I mean, like Cornell was the first guy to go up, Paul Danke, and then, of course, Brody would do it all the time, and, you know, Megan Beth Keister and Chill Trill Bill. Yeah. Megan, she's a firecracker. You got a new... Yeah. Uh, a. Uh, what is it, Grift Horse uh, podcast yeah. with her? Grift Horse podcast with her. It's on uh, Patreon and SoundCloud. We talk about grifts and flim flams and cons and ways to save money against corporations and all yeah. that. We just got a letter from a listener who's who's used our tips to make $1,100 so far. Hot so, damn. Yeah, Megan's very thorough and... I pick her brain and it's really fun. Yeah, I've uh, I've shoplifted a lot. Did that count in that category? Hell, uh, yeah, I guess. But I mean, the, here's the key to shoplifting. Try not to break laws. Well, yeah, it's definitely breaking the law. But the key is, you don't steal. You also buy. You buy and you take something for yourself. Oh, I like that. Because it's like it's, uh, paying it forward to you. Yeah, yeah. And when I think the second you stand in line, you're immediately off their radar as somebody who might have stole something like if you're paying for something security's not usually looking at you right. until they listen to this and then hey if we had got any security guards out there who are fans i welcome them and uh, i welcome the challenge yeah. i welcome well, the challenge I mean, that's a tip that i learned i don't know if it was from megan or one of the listeners but uh most of these stores have a no chase policy oh you yeah literally can just pick something up and run out the door with i know for a fact a friend of mine was head of security at the culver city westfield mall a while ago he doesn't work there anymore so brag but go on yeah <laughs> Uh, that's 100% true because there was a time when they were chasing somebody and that thief got hit, uh, alleged thief, got hit by a car in the parking lot and sued the mall for $2 million. Damn. Nice. So he got that's out of the there with grift of all. $2 million and whatever was in his pockets. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so it's different. He probably was headed to the Apple Pan. To that's, get those that's, why that's why a lot of those like store clerks get so aggressive with shoplifters because the police aren't going to – it's just a ticket. If it's less than a $1,000 value, it's just a misdemeanor. Mm. So the police mm. – like there's and, – And good luck they show up even. Yeah, so that's why like the only quote-unquote like hope that the sh these little store owners have is just scaring these thieves on their own. Yeah. But right. once word gets out, there's, there's like no real – Enforcement. Yeah, it's like a beware of dog sign when you don't yeah, have one. Basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I um I have not done any uh any of the shoplifting with with since having a car because I feel like cameras and license plates work there against me. Smart. But on bicycle, you are a, a ship in the night. Like you, the second you get on a bike and ride away, even if they have it on camera, it's like, who's that guy? It's like, how it's are we like, ever going to find him? Yeah, I just wonder how they like solved crimes in like the old west or just like before they any like- They just didn't. Yeah. They yeah. did. Like if somebody killed a guy, it's like, I don't know. I heard yeah. it might have been that guy, but right. who knows? That's why they always needed a strong lawman in those shows because it was just chaos. It just be, have to be one strong guy to impose his will. Yeah, and uh, and- I think they that's why they would have swift justice, too, because they're like, we don't need people thinking about this too much because it was probably the wrong person or something. But it's just like, grab one guy, kill him, matter over, everybody go back to your thing. We have law here. Yeah. That would have been a good Western show, a guy on a bicycle. He doesn't have a horse. <laughs> Shows up on a bike. They had bikes back then. They did, yeah. Was, I think there was maybe one of those, uh, the giant front tire bikes. <laughs> yeah, he's got that one. I have seen assholes riding around, around L.A. Mm. Uh, those and then like the 12-foot tall bike. Have yeah. you seen the guys They're riding those? the same, aren't they? Well, no, I've seen like uh, a tall bike where like just the frame is huge and it has like these crazy chains that connect. So your pedals are up here where you're pedaling and then there's a chain that goes down to like ground level and then goes back to the bike and it's regular size tires. See if you can find a picture of a uh, super tall bicycle, but like regular tires. Isn't that easy to like, wouldn't 
Like you just stick a stick in there? And oh, you the whole could thing? get fucked up so quick on one of those things. And they have to like, it, it, it's like weird balance to get up on it. The only thing I can see that it makes it um, an advantage is you're up above traffic. So right. you can like see way ahead of you and stuff. I guess for, for bumps and potholes too, you're not going to feel them or you're not going to go down when you got that big wheel, right? Well, no, these are regular size wheels. It's just oh. the frame is, they've like extended the frame so higher I'm, up. I'm looking up extra large bike frame, regular tires. Or Yeah, or like tall bicycle, regular tires okay. or something. They're all, I've seen quite a few of them with, and it's like a hipster thing. You know, probably bike people just build their own bikes. But I don't get it why they do it. Sounds wacky. Um, so you biked a little around. Were you going to college in Austin too? Uh, no, I was already out of college and oh, went in New York. But um, I don't know. Did you want to hear the rest of the squat melt thing? Oh, yeah. We didn't finish the pitch. Okay, yeah. Go on. All right. So we started doing the show out there. Then six months later, they kicked us out, said you can't be back here anymore. We moved to the Steve Allen Theater. So now we're at another abandoned, ready-to-be-demolished comedy theater. And we did that for six months. On the one-year anniversary of the whole show, we showed up at Steve Allen to do a one-year anniversary show, and the place was fenced off. They weren't letting anybody in. Mm. So we did a one-off across the street. Then we made it mobile. That one-off across the street, though, was the only time it was like SWAT showed up. Yes. There was about five cop cars and 12 cops so show four up. Cop, four cop SUVs. Yeah. Basically the security guard. There you go. Oh, okay. Something like that. Is that Harvey Weinstein on there? Uh, no, I think that is Shaloub, though. Oh, Jeff Epstein. That looks like Tony Shaloub. Mm. From Wings now. He's got wheels. Yeah, Monk. There he is. That's he, Manhattan Beach or something. He there. actually, uh, he went. we went to the same college. Oh, right. There's another one. That's like a dumbass one that some guy built. Yeah. And you'll just see people riding those. I don't get, like, why are you making? How'd you break your ribs? I was on my bike. I was I on my super bump. tall bike. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we, the SWAT shows up, they kick us up. They were, I, do you think, what do you think they th thought was happening? I think they saw some kind of show or get together happening and they thought, Jesus, sorry about this. It's the altitude. We're on the 18th floor. It's dry up here. Are we really? Yeah. <clears throat> At least it's on camera too, me coughing. <laughs> um, I think that they thought, let's do a show of force so that whatever happens here will just be quickly contained. And never happen so again. They could have just walked up and said, hey, you guys need to go, and we all would have. Yeah. Instead, they all got together and puffed up. It was kind of like 300. Let's get in the shell formation. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be undefeatable. What is this? Get his fucking podcast at Pete Suval. We do not need that up advertising. It's not, it's not, <laughs> no, it's not, on, it's not on the monitor. Okay, so I, cool. No I one, just don't like looking at it. No, no, I know. I'm pulling it off. Sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. Pete's a great guy. Um, so, so, yeah, then Pete, it moves. So, we did that. That was a one off at Barnsdale. Yeah. So, then I thought, well, I mean, at, at every point that we got shut down, I thought, okay, that's the end of the show for good. So, but then this time I thought, well, what if we make the show mobile? then they can't shut us down in one spot. So we started meeting, walking a few blocks, stop, two, three comics, do sets right in front of a store that's closed down for the night or whatever, then walk another block, a couple more comics do up. So that, that was the idea of the comedy crawl. And now when you when that first one we did, which was like uh, down Hollywood up Vermont, had you strolled it first to look for good spots to stop or was it just... Let's walk until you see something that inspires you. I was like a little of both. It was yeah. like we could, I thought there was a couple good spots, but I think we stopped in another spot anyway. And then, or, you know, this spot's not good. Let's go up. Because we a ended further. up finding perfect, uh, like the, the whatever. The chaplain stage? The chaplain stage was great. Um, and then the, uh, the whatever that, like, Armenian banquet hall yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, place was always good. Always good. That and was ritzy. It was ritzy. It was cool. Looking. The steps to start it out was a good place to start and end at. Yeah, and then we're gonna do we're gonna do one there this week as a one off because anyway it continued from there down to Echo Park Lake where we did it for six months and now we're kind of doing a different spot every week just to keep it fresh. Mm. So we're going back to Vermont this week. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, meet at we still meeting at eight thirty. Uh, it's down to eight now. Eight eight yeah. until the light. Uh, comes back yeah. again. But right. uh, the Steve Allen Theater has been torn down, so when we meet in 
when we meet there now, it'll be the first time that we met, meet there where it's just like an empty lot. Yeah, nothing there anymore. But this comes out uh, probably later today. So anybody listening who wants to come to Squat Meld on Wednesday, 8 o'clock in front of what used to be the Steve Allen Theater. There you go. And if you watch the uh, Bill Hader show. Yeah, um, Barry. Barry. It's the... It's the uh, building of the acting school. Yeah. Now it's gone. And also, the if you watch, have you seen that Netflix show, You? Not yet. Uh, that is heavy squat mount territory. Really? Yeah. Dalia's in that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They go to uh, the theater there. The, uh, there. It's right next to the Chaplin stage. Um, pretty much all up and down Vermont is in that show. Right on. Um, but yeah. Oh, and I was going to say, too, having Echo Park is knowing that's there. It it kind of gives peace of mind to squat melt because it's like a retreat place. Anytime yes. something doesn't work, we can go okay back to the park, regain. It's funny that you said that because this past week I was thinking like, well, maybe next week we'll go to the park, and I was like, but no, we'll probably go to the park like if one of these places sucks. Yeah, you know, if it's, if these places keep being fun, we'll just keep doing them. So yeah. Uh, suggestion for one is uh, oh no, oh my my headphones are cutting out. Sorry. <laughs> no, it was Griffith Park. I don't know yeah, if you can, can go that. Griffith Park at night or not, what their uh, deal yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know. Probably around 8, you'd probably be okay. But yeah. I don't know. Bl- walking through there with blaring a speaker. <laughs> and, yeah, that know. mountain lion come out and take somebody out. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I find most of them just by driving or walking past them, like, oh, that'd be a good spot. Uh, should we do it there? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's hard to kind of like, hmm, where should we do it? It's it's better just to see it. So the week, uh, two weeks ago, when it was, it was inside that lot where we were last week, right? Yeah, there was a Fortune Gym was there, but those guys moved because the strip mall's condemned. So I thought, Jesus let's Christ. do it in there. Sorry, buddy. Veteran podcaster, and he's got his <laughs> phone on. Sorry, my friend got their Tesla broken into. They stole their guitar pedals. Brett. I yeah. saw him put that up oh, on. Yeah. Oh, he put it on Twitter. Yeah. Wow. That sucks. Yeah. And at first, I I read it as paddles, and I was like, <laughs> it's like I it took me a long time to get put these paddles together, and when that's because I'm this dyslexic. Crazy shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Let's bring no, it. This, so uh, this is mechanical, kind of like a bike. Um. We'll say Brett uh, Morris, who I've met, a uh, great guy, is um and producer she, on your on Who Charted. Yeah. And and a bunch of Earwolf stitcher and he's, podcasts. Yeah, and he's helped you make a bunch of music and stuff. But, Actually, uh, we have a song. But he says, uh, long story, but the fucking Tesla shop reset all my settings and didn't tell me. And there was a super buried obscure one that made it so the car didn't lock when I walked away. Like it always has from day one. So basically the remote locking mechanism was fucked up and he had no clue. Can he? Oh, I would bring that to Elon himself. Seriously. Get him to replace those pedals. Take that to Grimes. Yeah, but there are thieves that also get their hands on like Universal. It's probably tougher to crack into a Tesla, but I know like I had my car stolen a few years ago, so I went down a rabbit hole of like how thieves get into cars and shit. And you can just get like the, a lot of times they can't turn on the car. But they can get in, like a uh, valet key or something. Yeah, like that. it's like they. It's if you have somebody at, uh, even if you know a friend who works at a body shop, a lot of times they can just like steal the sick. It's like a little signal they send to the car. Yeah, and there's ways they can steal it and these like generic unlocker things. And what they do is they go around and look, especially for cars that have the little no smoking signal or uh, sticker because it's a rental, which means you're probably more likely to have baggage in there. Uh, oh yeah. So smart. then they'll go and they'll look at like what's an area like the Third Street Promenade area, right? People are going from the airport oh let's go get dinner and they'll just go into the garage and just roll around and pu- and push it until they hear a doot doot and then yeah. just steal your bags mm. this is like grift horse everyone who listens is becoming a better criminal <laughs> 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 well have you ever uh so w- broken you go, into a car y- w- yeah have you ever broken into one of your own i've had to uh, lock my keys in my car and had to break in many oh, times oh, no, I did. No. this newer one i haven't yet and and it's a little tougher i've only with had it two weeks i hope not uh you'd be surprised with me <laughs> i've had a lot of head injuries i forget shit a lot um but uh older cars i i had a vw uh fox 92 fox that i was good with the hanger just right in the window click pop it up right up I had uh, a Scirocco, VW Scirocco. No shit. But I had the car key, the thing under the back tire, the, the little car thing. The little magnet, yeah. The key thing. Uh, but you move, so, um, yeah, that's Squat Milk. Come on Wednesday uh, if anybody's Wednesday interested. Night, it's super every, fun. Every Wednesday, 8 p.m., Rising Comics, Vanishing L.A. That's the new one. <laughs> that's uh, the new one. <laughs> yeah. It used to be Hilarious Comics, Abandoned Comedy Clubs, uh, like that. Abandoned Venues. Yeah, was it Rising Stars, Falling Venues, or something like oh, that? Oh, that's good, too. Uh, but 
But and also, there's been some. That's um, good for right now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. CV, everybody. Um, Hire them for your staff. I uh, that there's been some great comics who are not just rising comics who are top comics. I mean, Brody's come all the time. Todd Glass has yeah. been before. Uh, uh, Natasha, Blake Wexler, Natasha. Yeah. yeah. Blake Wexler didn't do it, but uh, Brooks Whelan did. That's it. who I was thinking. <laughs> no, Blake. Blake's been by when we were at the old spot. Blake Wexler, from from Workaholics. No, who am I thinking of? That's who. Wait, I'm I'm getting it wrong. No, Blake Wexler was not in Workaholics. Oh, who's that? Blake Wexler's friends with Todd, and he's on his show. I'm pretty sure. Is that? I'm oh yeah, of, yeah, Blake Wexler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm checking right now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, he was from Boston too. He started out in Boston. That's how we uh, knew each other. Um, but uh. Blake Wexler started doing stand-up at the age of 15 in Philadelphia and moved to Boston in 2007 to pursue a stand-up comedy career and attend Emerson College, according to IMDb. Yeah. Right on. Five He's the program. one who has, I think it's him, uh, just put out an album of Todd Glass's uh, calling him on his voicemail. Oh, okay. Since he yeah, was yeah. 16. Oh, uh, wow. He first met Todd when he was 16, and so he has like 10 years of voicemails oh, from Todd Glass. Great. By the way, Blake Anderson is the workaholics guy. Uh, there, there we go. go. Okay. Yeah. There's more than one Blake. Um, Blake Lively. Uh, Blake Lively from the Blake Sheldon. Section. Blake Sheldon. Blake yes. Sheldon. Um, Elton Sheldon. You go to uh, Austin and then you come to LA. Any? Have you ever biked in LA? Have you ever done any like beach biking or anything? Biking in LA. Me. Uh, but uh, no, I was a segwayed. I know I've segwayed at a party once. <laughs> Biking at a wait. What does that mean? At a party, just like around the room, or was it at least outside? Right when segways come came out, I went to a party in the hills, and there was people like segwaying around the property, and oh and God. that was that was just like you like oh I'm up in the hills now. It's highfalutin up here, you know. It's just stupid, but it was an old. Uh, God, and now like on Groupon, you can take a segway tour of Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a friend in or the death tour on a segway. River Phoenix outside the, the go go. <laughs> yeah. I go to you. showed my wife that the other day. I was like uh, the Viper Room runner. I was like, that's it. That's where she died. Where he died, and uh, she was just like, neat, neat. She, oh, cool. Yeah, she doesn't care about any of that stuff. Every city I go to, I like to find like stuff like that or like uh, filming spots. Right. Like go to Chicago and go around and see all the different spots where they film stuff. And yeah. my wife could care less about that. What's good? Opposites attract. Yeah. 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 Uh, I saw Odenkirk bike, Bob Odenkirk biking uh, by the Griffith Observatory once. I'm trying to think really? of my L.A. biking stories. You no, it was, I, was, I had another. Oh, go ahead. I was going to Ewan McGregor's a huge biker, too. Okay. Really? Yeah. I work for a bike tour company part time. Yeah. And one of, I wasn't on my tour, but another one of my uh, co workers is given a tour in Santa Monica, and he was like on some super old vintage bicycle, and he like chatted with the group for a few minutes. Apparently, he's only, he doesn't like, he's only into like old bikes. Like That for, seems about like right. Like decades ago. Yeah. yeah. New bikes. He's like, I'm not, I'm not. These steampunk bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about like people who do biking for fitness. I don't get. Uh, I think I was talking about this at Squat Melt. The uh, dress up like you're on the U.S. mail team. Yeah, Lance. <laughs> when yeah, you're just Armstrong. out there doing it right. for like a Sunday ride. Armstrong in it. Yeah. 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 I even take the PEDs. Um, but I, because I don't get it, because it's like if you're just doing it for a workout. Isn't it harder if you just wear jeans and do it? And wouldn't it make the workout harder just to go out and do it in jeans? Good point. But if the guy next to you is in his little tights, he's got aerodynamics on you. Yeah, that whole thing, too, of like, hey, all 30 of us, let's meet up and go ride. That's that, weird. That would cause me such stress, like riding down the PCH mm. with like 30 other people. But if, that, if that's your social circle, yeah, I, you I get probably it. have a boring life. I always life. feel like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like sober people trying to stay busy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but they are like a shitty improv team, right? They're all in matching uniforms. Yeah. And just, you know, getting in the way of everything. Yeah. Like, and anytime, like, anytime people go too wide, like two bikers wide on the road, I just don't care for that at all. I figure like nobody wants you here. Be less of a problem at any point when you can. No, Like so many people where it says uh, that the bike may, may use full lane. Right. I never, I'm like, yeah, I Maybe they tell you that, but no car is going to be like, oh, it's their right. They can use the I full know, lane. They're, they're just going to get beeped at and uh, swerved around. And yeah. Have you ever have you been involved in any uh, bicycle, bicycle related accidents? Bicycles. Um, <laughs> Bicycle J. Fox. Uh, Bicycle <laughs> Jordan. No, I just I rode a scooter one time and just 
Oh yeah. So we were talking about this before. I we where the studio is compared to where Howard lives is like kind of up the hill. So you could just coast down on a bike. And he was saying take the scooter back up, but scooter I won't up. touch the scooters. I will not get on those things. Well, I said that too because I was fully anti-scooter. These are garbage. They're junk. All that stuff. They're in the way. Blah 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 blah. And then. And then I had I forget why my car was in the shop or something, but I took one from Melrose up Sunset and was just had permagrin the entire <laughs> way. It was just like uh, I've never gotten flipped that fast on anything. Like, oh it was yeah! Like, oh my god, it was so fun. And it went up that hill. Like how? What part of Melrose and Sunset? Like because that can get pretty steep by like La Cienega and stuff. Uh, yeah, no, it was more like uh, between like Fairfax. Fairfax, and okay, yeah, but um. At one point, I came to a four-way stop, and there was a woman in a minivan, and she obviously had already stopped and gotten there first. Yeah. But I wasn't sure how to brake yet, so I just went rolling right through, and she beeped the horn, and I was just thinking, like, yep, I know, like, <laughs> scooter people are assholes. I'm with you. I fully agree, but I didn't know how to stop. So within seconds, you were not only happy with the scooter, but you had become the annoying scooter exactly person. Exactly right. Who exactly just couldn't right. even stop. That's hilarious. I remember the same thing with skateboards. Like when I, I did start to screw around with them a, a little here. Yeah. And it's like when you're skateboarding, you're like, the world's my slope, man. And yeah. Like, why are these pe com like security guards hassling me, man? But when you're not a skater, it's just like, why is that loud, sweaty, annoying <laughs> guy keep slamming his board on the sidewalk? Like, what age do you think is like it's weird to see? I don't think there's any age where it's weird to see someone on a bicycle, but there is a certain cutoff where you see someone on a skateboard and it's very yeah. bizarre. Unless you're, unless you're Tony Hawk, you shouldn't be like 40 on a skateboard. Well, I'm 35. I still skate. Um, but the difference yeah. is, is you, you can go. tell... <laughs> You can tell yeah. if somebody knows how to do it. If they know how to do it and they're an older guy still on it. That makes sense. It's I'm cool with that. But if you see like an older, I would say, yeah, 35 on who's like not sure of themselves on a skateboard. Huh. I just go, buddy, it's not. You didn't get it when you were 16. This is not for you. That's a good point. I remember a couple of years ago I had an internship in D.C. And there was like a guy in a suit, like it's like a cool, probably like late 40s, early 50s dreadlocked old black dude on a skateboard yeah but like in like a suit yeah and it didn't it like was like whoa like this guy's like professional going to work but he also looked like oh this was his life as a kid and now he just has to wear a tie yeah 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 and but it, yeah as long as you look like you know how you can skate mm -hmm. i'm i'm okay with it but trying it as a new thing in later in life is that's what's so rough about man on the moon it's like we're not we can't do this we're, yeah we're old. <laughs> I just I would want to know like if and I mean probably do, other people it wasn't significant in their life but if there were other people on the set that day just going like who are these dudes in the skateboards over here like, why are their hair so weird <laughs> <laughs> did you have to have like uh, hair prosthetics and everything yeah it was like they gave you seventies hair like, yeah kind of like Travolta like like sweat hog hair they yeah do they glue it on you how does that work. It was just like a ton of hairspray. Like there wasn't oh, okay. any like prosthetic piece of hair. Oh, okay. No. But they just like, took what anything. you had and just went nuts with it. Oh. Looked pretty cool. I have pictures. That's why I'm glad I have the shaved head now. Is I think it makes it easier for hair to just throw away yeah. on me. Amen. It's to that. already it's already there. Yeah. He knows it. Where are we at for time? You got? You got oh a, shit. Um, like twelve minutes. Yeah, but we got to do this one oh, thing. Right. We show this video. Uh, done it every episode. Get your reaction. It's it can be seem gruesome. Um, it's uh, a so remind me what am I this guy? No, no, but not. Uh, there's nothing graphic about it. It's okay. just it's a fall and skiing that Re is a famous video. Remind okay. me I always, what's the type? What uh, the type it's thing? just if you do like Tanner Hall. Um, a ankles are broken. Oh my god! Uh, but you don't even see the ankles broken or anything. But. I find not the crash because one, I if this if he ever sees this and he's like, why do they show the video of the worst fall a, of my life? Is this a weekly thing? I show it to every every person because the reaction I find hilarious. Okay. Just ready to come out and start filming. I just wanted to get one more in so I can you know Shed, just be yeah. ready. Yeah. Ow! Oh. Oh. My ankles are broken! Oh. My ankles are broke! His ankles are broken! <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> they, they show a couple other angles if you want to see it from the side. <laughs> okay, we can cut it now. <laughs> That's the exact shit I never watched. <laughs> but the that reaction. he landed, it was like that was the worst possible landing possible. Oh, he, yeah, he just front-sided that Ugh. thing there. But the the him, him, I get screaming. It, it still is a little weird, but screaming, my ankles are broken. It's just, you, I mean, you're probably in so much pain, you don't know what to do, and you're just screaming because they're also way in the back country like it was hours of getting out of there on snowmobiles and shit yeah but it's this the other guy as he's screaming that and everybody can hear another guy decides to chime in and go his ankles are broken yeah. <laughs> like he's telling anybody new information his ankles are <laughs> broken. broken like garrett morris on old snl uh, man i wonder uh if they use that audio in like basketball crossover clips Ooh, that would be good <laughs> <My ankles are laughs> broken. they should somebody gotta do that man i can't believe so in that uh it's always sunny in philadelphia skiing episode they do that exact thing charlie falls and start screaming my ankles are broken uh, and i was like that's when i knew like they really did their research for spoofing all other ski films and stuff because they found this random i mean it's not a random clip he's a super famous skier and stuff but mm. like for hollywood guys who don't necessarily know anything about skiing to do research that deep to find that to then mock it in the show right i was like i respect that did they do uh the thrill of victory agony of defeat one um from uh better off dead no from wild world of sports it used to be that used to be the uh intro for, for wide world of sports oh no you no know was, that? you I, should look at that but that's like the most famous skiing accident of all time oh, it was abc's but, wide world of sports. i remember that show and it, they would go the thrill of victory and you'd see something great happen and then they go the agony of defeat and uh long distance a long jump skier lands and oh yeah like a head. nordic skier yeah uh I, know, I guess I, I'm older than you, but that was like every Saturday but I don't think on they, TV. Yeah, I remember watching as a kid. I don't think they changed that the at side, all. The thrill of victory. And on the other, its inevitable companion, the agony of defeat. Oh, this, I, I don't think this is the intro. No, this is yeah. just a, uh, a piece on it. Yeah. yeah. No, another crazy crash, uh, it's famous ski crash, is Herman Meyer in the Olympics in... Uh, I want to say Austria, he crashed, uh, goes through three of those snow fences and like, looks like he is not getting up, comes back the next day and wins gold medal. Damn. Yeah. He was like this crazy Austrian bricklayer. There was just this giant man doing, uh, the GS. Oh yeah, here it is. Harjoituksiin, mutta oli siis kakkonen lauantaina Herman Mayer. Hän on se mies, josta puhutaan tämän kauden alppihiitto kilpailujen yhteydessä enemmän kuin kenestäkään muusta. Hän on voittanut kolmasosan kauden 30 maailmankap-kilpailusta. Hallitsee kaikki lajit pujottelua lukuun ottamatta, vaikka siinäkin Alppi yhdistetyn tiimalla on ollut tällä kaudella mukana ja näissä kisoissa. Ja nyt on dramatiikkaa. Herman Mayerin hurja oh voltti God. päättää uh, kyllä nyt yhden ennakkosuosikin kilpailun, jos hän yeah, selviää. He, he was way up in the air and landed on his head. Yeah, like. and came back the next day and won gold. Um, all right, so I'm glad we got to show you. We got you. to show that ABC's Wide World. All right, Sports. see if we can find it. Look, put, add an intro because it was the introduction to the show. Just ABC Wide World Sports intro. Yeah. Okay. ABC Wide World of Sports intro skier. Maybe throw that in there. What were your uh, your outdoor sports activities? I know we've talked about you. You would go up to Mount Snow and go skiing and stuff. Yeah, my dad would take us skiing. I was, uh, you know, just like the dumb sports you'd play with your friends. Um, like, you know, like... Kick the can? Curve you ever play ball, that? curve ball, and yeah. that kind of stuff. Like you, you, weren't a, uh, you weren't a school sports kid at all? I ran track senior year of high school. I played Pop Warner football. But oh, you did play some football. Yeah. What were your position for football? Uh, I was like a like safety linebacker. Really? I blocked the pass. It's were you, uh, I mean, you're what, 6'2", 6'1"? 6, six, six, almost 6'1". Six, 6'1". One. Six, one. Um, one were you uh, a bigger kid in your class, or like when did you No, I was shoot skinny. Up? I mean, we were just like... Me and my friends were the like only counterculture like punk rock kids in like a school of like three hundred and fifty. Like we we weren't like the uh, jocks and athletes. Yeah, yeah. And stuff. yeah this yeah. might be it. Oh, that looks like it. 
If it's is it short? Like yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport. The thrill of victory. And the agony of defeat. Oh, <laughs> He didn't even make it off the jump. The human drama of <laughs> he went like too far <laughs> and like was off the end He's, of the course. He fell and slid off the side of it. This yeah. Is oh, that. Wide world yeah. Of that's, I mean, that's not even like defeat. Like you didn't even get a chance to compete. No. Before you were defeated. Defeated. <laughs> I, w I used to, was pretty reckless as a skier as a kid. Yeah, you like, just throw yourself into stuff. On the well, you know, because you're from New England, like yeah. on the East Coast, it would always be too icy or too warm. So mm -hmm. there'd be like they put the two sticks up over a mud pit. Yeah, yeah. I I would just go through those sometimes just for fun. Just put ski right over it. Just knock over the sticks and then <laughs> get mud splashed up all over my. We would definitely do like come springtime when you start to get those big slush things, like try and make it more of a puddle to like skim over and stuff. Like yeah. the Water later ski. they'd have, yeah the the pond skimming thing uh which i there's are some great falls too watching people fall pond skimming because it's almost no consequence you know they're gonna be fine they just right. fall into water but it is no one's like my ankles are <laughs> 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 all right uh that is it for this episode i gotta go to work um and uh, get out of here and howard i want to thank you so much for coming in absolutely uh this is to live and bike in la and like i said like we have people on who are big bikers and people who have never done it before we had an episode a couple of weeks ago uh, Jimmy Calloway um, ha hasn't biked since he was 19 because his dad sold his bike at 19 and was like a huge <laughs> grift in the family that kind of split him and his dad's relationship for oh, a while. I had no idea going in. I was just like, so what do you do? Are you <laughs> ridden a bike? And then we get into all this stuff, and I was like, that's why it's a, it's a great topic it's a loaded to, issue. Yeah, to come at people with and see what their experience is. But thank you so much for being on the episode. Absolutely. Uh, Check out Hansen's episode of Who Charted. We count on the top five music yeah. uh, uh, movies and more right there on Stitcher. Who Charted and Grift Horse. Uh, yeah, Grift Horse is on SoundCloud. Uh, check that out. And then uh, I have Hey Gang and Preem Stream on Patreon with the aforementioned Brett. He just got his guitar pedals, stole out of his car. So go on there and support the show. Yeah, go support the show. And if you're a uh, music company um, and you want to give a great guitar player and producer some free pedals, he needs them. Brett Morris, uh, grab him on Twitter and help him get that. Because it seemed like he had quite a board that he had built and the whole thing got stolen. Yeah, he's got a great delete pedal that he uses uh, when we record <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> he just does it with his feet. Uh, all right, that is it for, for To Live. Oh, and, and Oh, sorry, go ahead. And check out Squat Melt Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Check uh, my Twitter to see where we're, we are at. That's at Howard Kremer. And also go to haveasummer.com slash shop. Pick up an Austin Stories DVD or a Have a Summer t-shirt. Speaking of Have a Summer, I have put, a couple of your songs on my work playlist. Awesome. So Thank at you. the at the spot that I work at, occasionally Goo Cruise will just ah, come over the radio. <laughs> Thank you so much. Check it out, 2014's Goo Cruise. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to see how it and myself, I think I will be at this uh, week's Squat Metal. will be back in the old location cruising down Vermont in uh, yes. Los Feliz. Pick a stage, it's yours. Um, and other than that, thank you guys and uh, good night. <laughs>